Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany. This time I'm tasting Irish whiskey, Teeling, well, bubble by Teeling, single grain, 15 year old, and it is a Bordeaux, ex Bordeaux Sauvignon Blanc casks 50 percent 15 years of age non-chilled filtered and what i hate is natural character that's not natural color so ah uh, whiskey base number two three one two oh one over here in germany basically 90 euros in ireland 110 Personally, I do not believe that the 20, per, 20 euros more, that's more than 20% more in price, is due just to the 4% more uh, VAT we have over here and the excise tax. I think the prices are either artificially high in Ireland or um, some type of... Um, artificially low in Germany so is that going to be I don't know um, so I don't get prices sometimes all right I understand what the prices are I do understand some market factors there but I just don't get it sometimes so all right so let's pull this out here now there's a wonderful statement on the Irish whiskey magazine dot Com, um, website here and it mentions the fact so where is that here I lost it already did I here we go Irish whiskey magazine.com Jack Teeling the founder and managing director of Teeling whiskey commented it is a little known fact that the majority of Irish whiskey sold is actually grain whiskey as it makes up the majority of the composition and big multinational owned brands of Irish whiskey so, so if we have over here our Jameson, maybe 80% grain, 20% malt, um, in that case, single pot still. As such, since our formation, we have been keen to ensure we offer unique and interesting expressions of teeling single grain whiskey. Well, I'm not sure if that's the real reason. If they really wanted to make teeling single grain, you would have installed a pot, uh, uh, instead of three pot stills, also a column still, like Royal Oak did. But that's just me. Now, our new 15-year-old release is a further representation of our mission to help drive the continued expansion of the Irish whiskey category through unique bottlings and expressions. He really does like the word unique, doesn't he? All right, so this is the 15-year-old Ex Bordeaux um, Sauvignon Blanc. And then what am I going to compare it to? I'm going to compare it to the Teeling 13-year-old. Bing, bing, bing single grain with a four-year maturation according to Celtic Whiskey Shop in Bordeaux red wine cast. This has a 12-month finish in the white um, wine casks according to Celtic Whiskey Shop. Now, Teeling doesn't give us that information, which is a shame. I have to go to a Celtic Whiskey Shop to get that information. Now, I did not like this for one simple reason. Sulfur. So if I smell it, oh, the Bordeaux red wine cask had sulfur. And it basically destroys the whiskey for me. So um, there was the Teeling Rosé. Sulfur. Monster. <laughs> Sulfite, sulfur. So in order to bring the casks from Europe over to Ireland, especially in the summertime and even not in the summertime, what many of the vineyards do is they put a sulfur candle into the cask. Um, sulfur oxide is in the cask, which prevents the, the wine and the wood and maybe a little bit of it actually in there from turning into vinegar, from spoiling. Now, there are other ways of doing that. People are now using um, CO2 and other inert gases. Wonderfully done. Um, some actually have like a like that um, click light where you um, there's that chemical reaction that glows that glow light and you have UV um, ultraviolet um, light that is sent out and prevents a cask from being um, from going bad from spoiling there are many many you can just ship them in a cooled container a chilled container 
um, also a possibility. Uh, there's all these possibilities of having non-sulfur wine casks making their way into the whiskey industry. But unfortunately, it's a slow learning curve. And here, um, Teeling has not um, been successful in avoiding the sulfur trap. Now here, the 15-year-old, the um, white wine, the Sauvignon Blanc, um, well done. No sulfur. Yay. All right. So I'm very, very happy about that. At least no, no detectable sulfur here. Now, um, there is here this nice little tin. I do want to mention that um, it's 100% certified uh, for stewardship, counted, sustainably sourced, recycled cardboard, and also itself fully recyclable. So um, I just kind of went, oh, look, and I just, and I was like, wait a second, ah, I broke it. Um, it's not even glued. So I'm not sure if that's what they wanted or not, but um, so if you take a look here, it's not even glued. Uh, you can push it back down. Now, many of the other um, tins that I have, I'm just going to pull out a Buna, 12-year-old 12, 12 cast strength here. Metal bottom, metal top. So when I try to recycle this, I always have the little bit of a problem uh, that when I put it into the uh, old pa the paper bin, I put the the bottom with the tin in there as well. Wow, it's magnetic, no problem. They're gonna, they're gonna um, shred it and take out the, the metal very, very quickly. Here, it's all, pa it's all paper, so I can throw this in my recycling uh, for the metals, and I can throw this in the recycling for, the, for cardboard and for paper, which is very, very good. So I like that. Congratulations, Teeling, for being a little bit sustainable there. Nice color unfortunately nowhere does it say natural color nowhere does it say then that there has been no uh, artificially colored uh added please do that so i think for the last five years i've been commenting on natural character means nothing absolutely marketing bs all right so personal opinion <laughs> on the nose I do like the nose. There's a little bit of a tropical moment going on here. Star fruit, um, a little bit of a barley. There's not much barley, it's 5% barley. A little bit of a powder sugar going on in there. Um, the official tasting notes have something about citrus and Granny Smith, apples and honeysuckle. Um, I do get a little bit of star fruit. Whoops, I get a little bit of star fruit in there. A little bit of vanilla. This could be actually a very, very nice summer whiskey, if not for the price. I think, and this will get to be my question of the day, what is for you a summer whiskey? Now, for me, a summer whiskey is I go out on the porch. I don't have one, but I go out on my balcony. Um, and there, I, I live in an apartment building. Welcome to Europe. And um, I can drink a whiskey in the evening. And it's going to be maybe like a, up to 40 euros. $40, 40 pounds, that's the price I would pay for a summer whiskey just to watch the sun go down and nip on it and smell it and so on. That's the price I would go for. I, I would probably go for a rye, to be very honest. I have a lot of ryes down here I love and I adore, and I'd probably go in that direction. Now, a, I would go for the Black Barrel here from Jameson. Very, very nice. 30 euros over here. That's maybe even a spot. Would I be up to maybe 50 euros? But 90 euros is not a summer whiskey. 110 euros in Ireland is not a summer whiskey. But Jason, it's 15 years old. What do I care? I care about the taste. I don't care about the age statement. And that's my problem here. All right? Especially with grain whiskeys. All right. Just trying to... Am I getting a little bit of sulfur or not? All right getting more sulfur. Maybe a very, very, very little bit. And I'm, I'm convincing myself I'm getting a tiny little bit. Okay. Good. Let's try this. All right. So, cheers. Mm hmm This is a Jekyll and Hyde whiskey. On the one hand, this is, oh, look, there's a fresh lemony, creamy vanilla, almost like a cream, clotted cream moment, honey melon, pears, 
maybe even a little bit of applesauce going on there. On the other hand, there's a sharpness of the alcohol that burns with a white pepper moment. Um, and then a tiny, tiny little bit of that of the old cast that Cooley used in the good old days to store their, um, their whiskeys, those third and fourth and maybe in fifth filled casks there. Um, the finish is yes and no at the same time. There's, there's, I think the wine did this very, uh, good, good justice. Uh, well done on saving this whiskey and turning it into something much better than it was before, I think. Um, but yet, this is not the whiskey I would gravitate towards. All right, I'm going to give it a solid C for taste, even though, it, as I said, it's, it's like a C plus and a C minus, so it balances itself out a little bit. I'm just going to have a tad bit of water, bring it down to 46, maybe 48%, and see what happens to that alcohol sharpness here. Someone decided 50%. This was 50%. So for some reason, they feeling somehow assumes at this moment that 50% is that perfect moment here for our non-chilled filtered. You can go all the way down to 46. Now, I'm not sure if the grain would also not cloud. But I do, as I said, I have that, I do have a good thickness of viscosity and creaminess on the palate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then actually water brings out a little bit of that old barrel, used barrel moment. So let's see. Value for money. D as I said, 110 in Ireland and um basically 90 euros over here in uh Germany. Would I be reaching for this? No. <laughs> this is something we don't need. A, why haven't you bought it? Very few whiskeys in my life have been A's. B, buy it. <laughs> so, C, buy it if you want to. D, you don't need to buy it. F, why was the stuff even made? All right, so um, you don't need to buy this whiskey. Unless, of course, you're a big fan of Cooley juice. Cooley single grain juice. Now, I was at the Whiskey Live Dublin, mentioned that, name dropping here, and I was at the stand of J.J. Corey, and I had a wonderful interview. Thank you very much for that. And um, the guy actually pulled out a bottle of single grain, Irish, 95.5. So probably it was Cooley juice and it was cast strength. I drank with another guy and we both looked at each other and he said, first of all, I don't know of any cast strength single grain Irish whiskey. And I said, well, thought to myself, Irish. We have had some in Germany. Uh, Marika Spitzer has, um, with her www.irishminuswhiskies.de, has actually bottled a few, but not many. It's very, very seldom that we get any type of grain whiskey from Ireland and cast strength. And so that was a pleasure. It was very interesting what they were doing there with those casks there. Um, and I think it was in tequila again. Grain and tequila, at least with um, J.J. Corey, seems to work out fairly well. All right, so going over here, I know the 13-year-old, I did not like it in my video that I reviewed, and I do not like it now. Why? Because of the sulfur. So, one second, watch my face. Hmm. Wow. It's like licking, sucking on a matchstick. <laughs> okay, I'm going to rinse my mouth out five times after that experience. How can you ruin Jason's day? Give him a whiskey with a lot of sulfur in it. Mm. So, question number one, what is your favorite summer whiskey? How much you're willing to pay? About 40 euros, or am I totally wrong? Question number two, what is your favorite single grain whiskey from Ireland? Write it down in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing, and sharing. See you real soon. Whiskey Jason here. Bye-bye.